Hi everyone. Welcome to Site 247's webinar series. I'm Rohit and I'll be hosting this webinar today along with my colleague Akash. Today's session will be on guidelines for domain owners to guard brand reputation amid security incidents. We will start with a brief introduction into Site 247 followed by the importance of website security in today's world. Then we will look at the five guidelines you need to follow to ensure that your website is secure. Now let's take a look into the importance of website security. Website security can be defined as the measures that are taken to ensure that a website is safe from cyber attacks. It's an ongoing process making it an essential part of website management. As of April 2020, more than 2.6 billion Google searches have been made for the keyword how to secure a website. This goes to show how important this is for website admins worldwide. And website admins are right to be worried because according to a study, a website can lose up to 98% of their organic traffic if a website is identified as being blacklisted or unsafe. Now, many small business owners might be under the impression that they might not get hacked as their sites are smaller and as such are not appealing targets for hackers. But this is a big misconception because unless hackers are targeting a website due to personal malice, all cyber attacks are done using automation, which targets every website, big or small, based on the vulnerabilities that are present. In this sense, it might seem like having no website is better than having one which is unsafe because an unsafe website will result in loss of brand reputation and will negatively impact customer goodwill as well as your bottom line. So what are the most common types of risks that a website can face? The first one is malware. Malwares are softwares that are specifically designed to cause harm to a website or to gain unauthorized access to a system. The second is getting blacklisted. A blacklisted website is one that is removed from search engine pages for a variety of reasons such as malware or existence of phishing links, etc. Any visitor to such websites will be shown warning signs to dissuade them from accessing the website. The third one is hacking. Hacking basically means exploiting the vulnerabilities in a website which allows hackers to access the website and its business information with tools such as an obsolete plugin. Next, we have DNS spoofing. DNS spoofing, also referred to as DNS cache poisoning, is a form of computer security hacking in which corrupt domain name system data is introduced into the DNS resolver's cache, causing the name server to return an incorrect result record, such as an IP address. And finally, we have defacement, which is an attack done with the goal of changing the visual appearance of a website. So how do you protect against such attacks? To protect your website from these attacks, we can follow five guidelines as shown in this slide. They are monitor domain expiry, watch out for SSL certificate expiry, be wary of IP and domain blacklisting, identify website defacement, and protect your brand reputation. Let us now look at each one of these in more detail. So let's start with monitoring for domain expiry. Domain names are the primary address for a website on the World Wide Web. This name acts as a billboard that attracts potential customers to your business, alerting them about the different goods and services that you offer. Simply put, a website cannot exist without a domain name. To understand the importance of domain name, Let's consider a scenario. Let's say that you have spent a lot of time, effort, and money and finally chosen a domain name. The domain name you have chosen is perfect for your business and brand. This domain name will be yours until it expires. You then spend a lot of time associating your brand and product with this name to the extent that the name has become integral to your business. Then one fine day, you log in and get a message that your domain name has expired. After all the effort you put into establishing your brand name, it's no longer yours and anyone else can bid for it on the open internet. And once another business acquires your domain name, they will be able to enjoy the fruits of all the goodwill and brand value associated with it. While you will have to start from scratch to rebuild and rebrand your business. 
So how, how can a monitoring tool like Site 24/7's domain expiry monitor help you in avoiding this scenario? A domain expiry monitoring tool like Site 24/7 will continuously check for your domain name's expiry, alerting you 30 days prior to this happening. This will ensure that you're able to renew your domain in advance and maintain ownership. You can also view important information such as days left to expire in the main dashboard, keeping you updated on a day-to-day -day basis. Also, you will be able to use reports such as the FQDN report in the report section, which will provide list of all the domains that are about to expire in coming days, thus allowing you to plan your actions in advance. So now let's take a look at the Site247 client to learn more about the domain expiry monitor. So you navigate to Site247, click on web, and under security, select uh, domain expiry. So you can see all the monitors that have already been added shown here. To add a new monitor, you click on the plus icon and give all the necessary information. So let's start with the display name and uh, the domain name you want to monitor. So I will give a name called zilka.com and next is the domain name expiry threshold so you have to set this value to the number of days before which you would like to receive a notification alerting you about the pending expiry of your domain name so let's keep it as 30 days for this uh, particular webinar and uh, after you have set all the other information you can move to third party integrations so th third party integrations, let's say you're using something for your ticketing or your alerting, you can select it from the list given here and, and Site247 will give you the option to integrate with them or you can even use webhooks and integrate with those that are not part of our out of the box content. So anything you want, you can select from here and uh, once you're done, you click save. So the monitor will be added and it will start showing in the domain expiry section of your dashboard. So let's go there. So you can see that the monitor has been added, but it's still discovering itself. This will take a few minutes to start showing the stats. So let's go to a monitor that has already been added. So let's go to this uh, training monitor here. Uh, the moment you open the monitor, it will take you to the first tab, which is the summary tab, which gives you all the information about the validity of the domain name. So the information shown here is the registration date, which uh, corresponds to the date when the particular domain was registered, the ex expiry date, which denotes the actual expiry date for the domain being monitored, the last modified date, which specifies the date on which some part of the domain information was modified by the domain holder, uh, days left for expiry, which is the information that is used to alert users about domain expiry, uh, the registered to information, which pro provides us insight on who is the person or organization to whom the particular domain is registered to. And uh, finally, we have the registered by information, which specifies the registrar who has registered this particular domain and or who maintains the domain's record in the who is registry. So after all this information, you'll also get two other tabs in this monitor called outages and uh, inventory. The outages tab will show you all the instances of alerts about domain expiry that were happening in this particular domain. Then uh, you also have an inventory tab which gives you basic information about this particular monitor. So now that you have seen how to keep your domains intact and uh, renew it proactively, the second guideline after taking care of domain expiry is to watch out for the SSL certificate expiration. So I'm sure that uh, most of you would have seen the screen at least once. This is the warning message screen that is shown by most browsers when you try to access a website without an SSL certificate or whose SSL certificate has expired. Any website that shows this warning message is considered to be unsecured. To put it simply, in this day and age, if you own a website or blog, you need SSL. It's no longer a luxury, but a necessity. The most important function of an SSL certificate is to protect client server information, which is the information in transit between the client and the server. SSL ensures that all information is encrypted 
ensuring that sensitive information such as passwords, financial information, etc., is kept safe from hackers and skimmers. Now, just hosting your website over HTTPS is not enough. You should also ensure that the certificates are properly renewed. Otherwise, it will result in browsers warning users about the invalid certificates being used by the domain and blocking said users from accessing the website. This will in turn erode the trust that visitors have on your website, ensuring that they don't return for future transactions, which finally leads to abandoned transactions on the website and loss in revenue. An SSL or TLS certificate monitor continuously undertakes multiple checks and alerts you about the expiry of your domain's SSL or TLS certificate in advance. Using such a monitor, you will be able to track the attributes of your website's SSL certificate, such as the expiry date of the certificate, which helps you to proactively renew the certificate before expiry, the certificate grade, which is graded based on the encryption, uh, support SNA enabled domains, then you have trust checks and blacklist checks, which perform CRL and OCSP checks to identify suitability of the SSL certificates, SHA1 fingerprints, which identify SSL certificate defacements, root and chain certificates of the domain, which, which uh, validates and reports any issues, and finally, the list of all the supported protocols and ciphers in the certificate. All these will ensure that you promote your site's trustworthiness and also be sure of providing a secure environment for your website visitors. So let's once again go to the Site247 client to understand this in more detail with a live example. So you go to the client, under security, you select SSL or TLS certificate, and to add a new monitor, you click on the plus icon. Now here, you give all the necessary information such as display name. So let's keep it the same as a previous one. So webinar test. Port we can keep as 443. And the host name can be zilka.com. Uh, give all the necessary other information. So one, one thing to note here is uh, when you're setting the monitoring locations, please ensure that you choose those locations that are valid for your business. So for example, if you're a US-based company, please ensure that you use uh, US locations. You can also use other locations uh, from other geographies if that's where your business is concentrated. So let's say if you want to use China or you want to use Brazil, you can also do that. Then click Save. Then give all the other information. Uh, and once you're done, click Save. So this also, similar to the previous example, will start showing in that particular section of the dashboard. So as you can see, it's being discovered. Let's go to a live example to learn more about this. So again, you come to the summary page first. The summary page here will show you a chain of certificates from end to end, starting from the end user certificate to all intermediate certificates for a given SSL host. So in this case, you have only one intermediate certificate, which is uh, this one here. Each of these certificates will also list the SHA1 fingerprint for that particular certificate. So for each certificate, you also get additional information such as validity issued by and issued to. Another important measure you can see in the summary tab is the grade for the SSL certificate. So if you want to see more information about this, you can click on it. So this grade is calculated based on the supported protocols, ciphers, bit length, certificate key exchange size, and certificate vulnerabilities. So again, similar to the previous example, you have the outages tab, which will show all the outages that have happened for this particular monitor. And you also have the inventory tab for the basic information. So now you know how to secure your domain and SSL certificates. The third guideline is to be wary of IP and domain blacklisting. So similar to the warning message we saw earlier, this is another warning message that is commonly seen whenever we try to access a website. This warning message is shown when a domain or IP has been blacklisted by various search engines. Now, you may not be aware when your website gets infected with malware, but the moment Google or any other search engine detects this, they will remove your website from the search index 
and put a warning label like the one you saw to ward off any prospective customers. Google on an average blacklists more than 10,000 websites per day and if your website is blacklisted by the Google Webmaster, it can affect your organic traffic by up to 95%. As mentioned earlier, you may not even be aware that your website has been hacked, but it's of utmost importance to search engines like Google to avoid showing infected websites in their search results and as such ensure this by regularly checking and blacklisting. Hence, just like for Google, it should be of equal importance to website owners to ensure that their websites are not among the infected results. A real-time blacklist check monitor checks and confirms if your host name or IP addresses are blacklisted against popular DNS-based blacklist database in real time. If your host name or IP address is found in a blacklist, then you're immediately notified through an email, SMS, or phone alert, which will allow you to take corrective actions immediately and instill confidence in your customers that they can contact you safely through email, your website, and social media. So let's once again look at an example in the Site247 client to learn more about this RBL monitor. So you go to real-time blacklist check, and you can see that a monitor has already been added. If you want to add a new monitor, you click on the plus here, and you give the display name. So Let's give the same name and host name can be uh, whatever you want to monitor. So zilka.com. And the, another thing that you need to do when you're setting up a real time blacklist check monitor is to provide blacklist providers. So this will decide against whom your host name will be compared to, to see if they are part of this particular blacklist or not. So uh, by default, all of them are selected. You can choose one or multiple ones also according to your interests. So you give all the other information, uh, third party integration, everything, and then click save. Now go back to RBL. And as I mentioned earlier, it will take a few minutes for the monitor to set up. Let's select a pre added monitor here. So in this monitor, in the summary tab, you can find the status of all the monitored IP addresses or host names. You can click on each of these IP addresses or host names to, to see the blacklist status against popular blacklists. So let's select this one here. Here you can see a green tick in front of each blacklist provider, which indicates that the website has not been blacklisted by any of them. If instead of this there was a red cross, this would mean that the website is blacklisted in the appropriate blacklist database. So similar to the previous example, you also have a blacklist history here, which will list all the outages recorded due to a blacklist. And you have the inventory tab, which shows the basic monitor information. And you have a log report tab, which will show the status of each check conducted on the domain by the monitor. Now let's move on to the fourth guideline which is to identify website defacement. So this slide shows you a classic example of a content defacement on a website. The top screenshot is of a website that has not faced defacement, while the one is the exact same website, but which has been hacked. As you can see, the hackers have completely inverted the messaging on the website, from improving patient outcomes to prioritizing profit. Much like graffiti in the physical world, a website defacement attack can leave a visible mark on your website. Such an attack allows a cyber criminal to replace the original message on your website with their own message, which could be political, religious, or simply shocking in nature. What's more, while website defacement detection isn't difficult, an untimely detection will make it difficult to get rid of these defacements without the website users falling for such attacks. But the worst part of a website defacement attack and inaction towards it is that it can damage your company's reputation, giving visitors the impression that you don't take website security seriously or are incapable of protecting your business online. The best way to counter this is by using a website defacement monitor. A website defacement monitor periodically checks for the integrity of your website by detecting any modification of the content or critical elements in your website. 
the monitor will record any web tampering that was detected and immediately alert you about it. Such a monitor can check for different types of defacements such as script defacement where the attacker might modify the scripts used in the website and post data to their own servers. Anchor defacement where the attacker changes the URL provided in the anchor element thus making the user click on it unknowingly and redirecting them to another website that resembles yours. Image defacement where the attacker changes the image source in your web page and showcases any malicious content as if it was posted by you. Link defacement where the attacker modifies the link source and completely changes the layout of the page. Iframe defacement where the attacker modifies the source URL in iframe tag and showcases their own page instead of intended content inside the iframe. And finally, text defacement where the attacker modifies the text present in the web page and puts malicious content in place, thus making your website visitors see a defaced content. So other than just checking for the di different defacements that occur, a defacement monitor will also help towards identifying the difference between legitimate changes and illegitimate defacements by keeping the list of whitelisted domains from the base web page. This will help in avoiding alerts when the change is within the whitelisted domain. So let's look at a live example to learn these points in more detail. So we go back to the site 24 Sun client and we select website defacement. Let's click on the plus symbol to add a new monitor. And similar to the previous examples, let's give the basic information starting with the display name. So the display name will be the same, webinar test. And domain URL, we can enter as vtitan.com. Let's get the website pages. So what this does is you don't need to physically enter every single web page URL that is associated with the domain name. All you need to do is enter the domain URL and the monitor will automatically find all these web page URLs for you. So they are all selected by default. If you want to select only one or a few of them, you can do that as well by clicking on the cross here. So I will go with the main web page URL alone and click save to monitor. The next part is for the whitelisting purpose, which is called allowed domains. So in this section, you can select what are the different domains from which changes are allowed for your domain. Similarly, in the next part, we'll select what kind of defacements we can monitor for. All of them are selected by default. Uh, let's keep it like that. And then you can also decide whether the threshold detection has to be automatic or manual in nature. Let's say we put it as manual. In this case, what happens is you need to enter values for the script modification or the content modification. Let's go back to auto. Then you enter the check frequency, which can be as less as one hour or one day. And also enter the credentials, if any, if, you need, if we need it to access this particular web page. After all this is done, you click save. And uh, let's go back to the dashboard. Let's select one monitor, which has already been added. And here you can see that the summary tab will show the current page stats. This shows the individual web pages and information about them, such as page size, element defacement status, script percentage modified, text defacement status, text percentage modified, and the actual reason for the element defacement. So you can see the actual reasons here. On scrolling further down, you can see a brief look into the defacement history. If you want to see the full list, let's uh, click on see more and it will take you to the defacement history tab. Here, if you want to see even more details, which will help you in troubleshooting this particular uh, uh, monitor, let's click on view RCA. This will open a new tab called downtime RCA, where you can see the full details about why this particular defacement has occurred. So you can see that the original value was are online and the hackers have changed it to we are offline. Similarly, how may I help you today was changed to leave a message. So you can see these things and make come to a conclusion as to how you can 
troubleshoot this particular domain. So let's move on to the last and final guideline, which is to protect your brand reputation. So you may not be aware of this, but Google maintains a repository called the Google Safe Browsing List. This is a repository maintained by Google that comprises a list of URLs perceived to contain malicious code. Any website that is in this list is seen as a threat to the online community and is often penalized by search engines. This in turn results in loss of online visitors and revenue for the domain owners. Site247's brand reputation monitor checks your website against the regularly updated Google Safe Browsing List and notifies you if your website is affected. These alerts will help you in steering away from malicious code in your website so as to keep your brand reputation intact. So uh, let us look at a live example to learn more about this brand reputation monitor. So go back to the Site247 client and this time select brand reputation. Click on the plus icon to add a new monitor and uh, give the display name. So let's give it as webinar test. And here you, you click on add web pages. So all, all you need to do here is enter your domain name. So let's say it's vtitan.com and you click on discover web pages. And uh, similar to the previous example, this will discover all the web pages associated with your domain name and automatically add them for monitoring. You, you can also only add this particular uh, web page URL alone by clicking on add this web page instead of discover web pages. So uh, let's just go with one web page URL here and uh, click save. Then give the other informations that are required and uh, finally click save. So it's that easy. All of the monitors as you have seen till now is very simple. Uh, you just need to give uh, some small information to add them. So let's go back to web and uh, click on brand reputation. So let's select a monitor that has uh, already been added. And here you can see the list of all the monitored URLs and their current status. Any URL that is subject to malware or phishing attacks or has an unwanted software update will be marked in red. So it will be marked as a suspected to be a threat, which is based on the advisory from the Google safe browsing list. And also similar to the previous examples, you can see an outages history here. You can also see an inventory for the basic information of the monitor and also a log report. So to recap, the five security guidelines to secure your website can also be termed as renew your domain and avoid DNS spoofing, renew your SSL certificates and ensure user data is secured, track IP and domain blacklist and ensure your domain or IP is not listed in them, monitor for page defacements and take corrective actions immediately and also avoid getting listed in the Google safe browsing list. So other than monitoring for your website security, Site247 can also offer more for your DevOps and IT teams with our full stack monitoring capabilities. Let's take a small peek at these. As a full stack solution, Site247 also provides you with other options to monitor different parts of your infrastructure. So Site247 is also available as an app on Android and iOS platforms. This will help you to receive alerts and notifications on the go. If you have any collaboration or communication tool that you depend on, Site247 will integrate with them. You can route notifications easily to Slack, automatically create and update tickets in Jira and Manage Engine Service Test Plus so that bugs don't fall through cracks. You can also trigger and resolve incidents in PagerDuty, Zapier, and ServiceNow. All and send alerts to webhooks to enrich existing workflows and trigger custom code. So you have a huge list of uh, third-party integrations with Site247, and we keep adding them to make conversations easier and smoother for you. So thank you all for joining us. Hope you found this webinar to be informative and interesting. So thank you.